Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gopaka Vinda So it was here in this place where Srila Vrindavan Das Thakur resided, Lord, Ch Lord Nityananda, we heard Lord Nityananda told Vrindavan Das, stay here in this place, 
and it was here, he had his residence, and he, it was here he wrote Chaitanya Bhagavat, which is the equivalent of Srimad Bhagavatam, how Srimad Bhagavatam describes the pastimes of Lord Krishna, and the Chaitanya Bhagavat describes the pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nityananda. So this is definitely a very special place that you have to be really empowered to write scriptures, to write such a glorification of the pastimes of the Lord requires a lot of spiritual potency. And it was here in this place that Vrindavan Das was able to get that spiritual empowerment and that's why he's Vrindavan Das Thakur. Thakur means very great devotee. Jaipataka Swami told us one time that he wanted to call our Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, he wanted to call him also Thakur. And Prabhupada told him, he said, oh, I have not done very much yet. I have to do more before you can call me Thakur. That was Prabhupada's humility. But anyway, uh, that was Prabhupada's desire. Uh, so Vrindavan Das Thakur, he is written in the Chaitanya Bhagavat. Jagai Madai Haiti Munishe Papista Purushera Kitta Haiti Munishe Lagista. We can understand what is the mood of Vrindavan Das Thakur. He said, Jagai Madai Haiti Munishe Papista. I am more sinful than Jagai and Madha. I am lower than the worm in stool. This is, and Prabhupada said, when these Acharyas say like that, they're not just saying it to be humble, they actually mean it. They actually mean like, they feel like that. If you read Chaitanya Bhagavad, there it describes like that. Then he goes on to say, anyone who, anyone who hears my name, they lose their pious activities. And anyone who chants my name, they become sinful. Only the mercy of Lord Nityananda could deliver such a fallen soul. So in this way, Vrindavan Das Thakur shows how he glorifies his spiritual master who was the Supreme Lord. Lord Nityananda, none different from Balara. Brajendra Nandana se Sachi Sutta Hailohe Balaram Hailo Nithai. Rajendra Nandana has come as the son of Sachi, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Balaram has come as Nitai. So Krishna and Balaram are non different. Only difference is their color. Krishna's dark color and Balaram's white color. So the same way. Nityananda and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu are Krishna and Balaram. They're not different. In the Chaitanya Charitamrita, uh, Krishna Das Kaviraj describes in the introductory verses, uh, he says, uh, Chaitanya and Nityananda are like the sun and the moon. Uh, how does it begin? Vande Shri Krishna Chaitanya Sanho Vande Shri Krishna Tanya Nityanando Sahodito Godo Daye Pushpa Panto Chitro Samo Tamo Nudo That Chaitanya and Nityananda are like the sun and the moon and the sun and the moon have arisen together to bless everyone's heart and to dispel the darkness of ignorance. So Vrindavan Das Thakur was residing here and he composed so many wonderful verses. The beauty of the Chaitanya Bhagwat is 
You know, just like I was in Calcutta Temple one day while the brahmacharis were all there and they were taking prasadam and somebody was reading Chaitanya Bhagavan and they were reading the Bengali. They just read the Bengali. And everybody can understand immediately everything. It's all, you know, it's Bengali language. It's, and it's vernacular. It can be understood. You know, we have to have everything translated, what this word is. But the Bengali boys, the Bengali brahmacharis, they were all sitting there and somebody's reading the Chaitanya Bhagavad and they're, they're all, you know, they really enjoy it. And even sometimes there comes a famous verse and everybody will say it together, you know. It's, it's so wonderful because they, they could all, they can all follow it. And sometimes you go by the kitchen at Mayapur Institute, they have a recording, somebody's reading the, Bhakti, the Chaitanya Bhagavat. And you know, they're cooking away and they're hearing the Chaitanya Bhagavat. They're reciting all of these verses from the Chaitanya Bhagavat. And they don't need to get it translated for them. You know, they can understand everything very nice. They're so fortunate. There is the, the beauty of being Bengali, that everything is, you can go right into these scriptures, like Chaitanya Bhagavat, immediately. It's so wonderful poetry. Just like when we were kids at school, you know, they would make us recite poetry, and we had to recite sometimes Shakespeare, oh, so terrible. Actually, Prabhupada learned all of those things when he was in school. Prabhupada learned it better than I learned it. Uh, although he studied in Calcutta and I studied over there in England, but he knew Shakespeare, he knew Shakespeare better than me. <laughs> he learned it better. Uh, and he didn't just learn Shakespeare, he also learned Srimad Bhagavatam. Sanskrit as well. So, uh, Vrindavan Das Thakur, he was a poet. He was a master. Of, he, he could write so many beautiful verses in poetry describing the pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Lord Nityananda. And here we have his worshipable deities. He was worshipping these deities of Gornitai. So he wasn't just only sitting writing his books, he was also worshipping the deities. So every day he would be doing the worship, offering arti, and taking the remnants of the food offered to the deity. So Lord Nityananda, arranged that Vrindavan Das Thakur would stay here and Vrindavan Das Thakur stayed in this place. They have the original manuscript here, right? The original manuscript of the Chaitanya Bhagwat is here in this place. And of course, they didn't have any laptops to write on. They didn't even have any ballpoint pens or typewriters. How did they manage to do it? It was all written on palm leaves. And the pens, I remember when I was a kid at school, you know, we had pens, we used to have to fill the pen. You know, and sometimes you write and the ink blocks, big blocks of ink everywhere, you know. So difficult, you know because we had to fill the pen, you remember Cherry Chips, yeah, yeah, that we had to use those kinds of things. So Vrindavan Das Thakur, he was using the, the, like a feather, they use like feathers, the part of the feather to write, and writing on a palm leaf, and there's no bottles of ink, I don't know what they use for the ink, but you know, not easy, that's the point. How much labor, how difficult it was. They have, if we go to Vrindavan, in Vrindavan, they have the original writings of 
the Goswamis, like Rupa Goswami, there's a Vrindavan Research Institute there in Vrindavan, and they have the palm leaves, the original palm leaves, which Rupa Goswami wrote, books like Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu on. And you can see the handwriting. It's just so beautiful. It's just so very, very beautiful. Bengali is actually a very beautiful script. When you look at it, I always think it was it's so nice. You know, some people can write very nicely. Other people, I don't know, my writing's horrible. I don't, I don't know what your writing's like, but Chinese devotees know also. Some people write Chinese characters very beautifully. You know, they even have uh, calligraphy, what do they call it? Uh, shufa? Calligraphy, yeah. Shufa, writing the nice characters. And they have a brush and pen, you know. Some people look very beautiful, you know. But if you're not very good, if you're not very well, you know, it will look horrible, you know. <laughs> So he was writing this whole book, so many verses. And then somebody else, they must have copied it. After he'd written it, some people must have copied it. And then got copied again. Just like I told about Gadarha Pandit, he wanted to study Srimad Bhagavatam. Srinivas wanted to study Srimad Bhagavatam from Gadarha, he'd gone to Puri. And Gadara said, no, the ink's all smudged. You have to go to Navadvip, get it written out again. Something else will write again. So Vrindavan Das Thakur, he's from that era. He wrote Chaitanya Bhagavat on palm leaves with a little point of a feather. And somehow he could write so many verses. And then it would be copied and then copied again until down to today, the present times, we have the Chaitanya Bhagavad. So, of course, we don't know how many changes have made from the original. You know, it's hard to keep everything, to preserve everything exactly as it was. Just like Prabhupada's books. Prabhupada's books go through so many changes, editing this to that. And so we don't know really what was Vrindavan Das Thakur's original Chaitanya Bhagavad. But somehow, in the times of Bhaktivinoda Thakur, Bhakti Siddhanta, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada, there was also Chaitanya Bhagavad. And Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada wrote commentary. I told Krishna Prabhu says, right? He wrote the commentary and it's included in some of the editions of Chaitanya Bhagavad. So we have to understand how much empowerment is necessary to actually write about the glories of the Lord. In the Srimad Bhagavatam it states that uh, those verses, even though imperfectly composed, are heard, sung, and accepted by such men who are thoroughly honest. So similarly, Chaitanya Bhagavatam, it is uh, the jewel of Bengali literature. And we, we want to hear it, we want to take pleasure in remembering all the different events which are described there. It's very important for us to know about the pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Sometimes people say, oh, this book's too philosophical. Just like if they read Adi Lila. Adi Lila volume one. Oh, much philosophy, too deep, you know, very difficult to under, long purports and people find it very difficult. But Chaitanya Bhagwa, it's all 
narratives, different descriptions, different pastimes, events, they're all described. It's very easy to read, very easy to digest, and very wonderful to share it and let other people hear it. So we want to develop a taste for these things by coming here and hearing about Vrindavan Das Thakur. Those of you who have not read Chaitanya Bhagwat, we think you'll be more eager to read it, right? How many of you have read Chaitanya Bhagwat? Have you read Chaitanya Bhagwat? Yeah, you see only a few, right? Most of us never read it. So we hope in the future you'll all want to read the Chaitanya Bhagwat get a copy or get some I, when I first became a devotee there were recordings there was one Swami Achyutananda Swami and he, he was learning he learned some Bengali and he'd make translations in English speaking and we had the tapes those days it was all real to real tape recorders you know we had the big real so <laughs> but somehow we had it and we would play it in the temple, we would listen to it, you know. Of course, I was a very new devotee, it was all very new, but <laughs> it was interesting. You know, after so many years of being a devotee, now all of these things become more significant. So similarly, all of you young people, as you go on in Krishna consciousness, you'll remember more and more about this place, and Vrindavan Das Thakur and his wonderful writing Chaitanya Bhagavat, which was written here in this place, this very place. So we're very indebted to him that he made that effort, made that sacrifice 500 years ago. He didn't know, he could not, he would not know that in the future that book would be written and published and distributed and translated to other languages so he was just writing he was writing Prabhupada said it's the duty of devotees that you should write he wanted us to write every day he said no, even you don't get it published it's just for purification so Vrindavan Das Thakur, he wrote this Chaitanya Bhagavat in that mood for his own purification. And then later on somehow devotees saw it and they took advantage of it to share it with other devotees. And it's been passed on and it's been preserved down to today. So we're very, very fortunate. And you can we can feel just how much uh, mercy Lord Chaitanya has given us. So this is the mercy of Lord Chaitanya which came through Lord Nityananda and then from Lord Nityananda to Vrindavan Das Thakur and from Vrindavan Das Thakur it came through the Chaitanya Bhagavad. Hare Krishna. You can find a song by Shri Narodam Thakur Mahashai called Shadaran Gaur Mahima. Shadaran Gaur Mahima. The first one is Gaurangir Duti Ord. Gaurangir Duti Ord.
Nityananda Mahima, the glories of Nitai Yosha, Actually, uh, Nityananda Prabhu glories, the glories of Lord Nityananda Prabhu are uh, most wonderfully described in Sri Chaitanya Prabhu. And Vrindavan Dash Thakur considers himself the servant of Nityananda Prabhu. And he describes and describes the glory of extensive descriptions of Nityananda Prabhu's preaching, Nityananda Prabhu's interaction with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So the scholar, as he was speaking, uh, uh, Gopanima, he was he was pleading with the assembled Vaishnavas. He was, I beg you, I beg you all assembly, uh, Sajana, Koshan, uh, Saka, Brahmana, Shajan, all the Brahman Vaishnavas, I beg you, if you want to enjoy in this world, if you want to taste the highest pleasure, read Sri Chaitanya That was it. He's not, he's not in the boat. And his conclusion after 40 years in the in the Bengali academic field was that the highest, the topmost Bengali poetry you should have I thought today we can, because here we are in the, the, the birthplace of Keshe Bharati Maharaj, where the Shiva Pranatana Shakur has uh, compiled the Sri Chaitanya Bhagavad. So I thought we could read a few verses from Sri Chaitanya Bhagavad against Keshe Bharati Maharaj. And then by the evening, glorify Shri Krishna Thakur and the Manila Krishna Bhagavatam. So at the end of Bhakti Khanda, of Chaitanya Bhagavad, as we were describing, the Hadi Khanda is the Bhav Lila, is the Vidya Lila, and is the Shankita. Uh, actually, Hadi Khanda, Chaitanya Bhagavad, is the Mahabharu Bhav Lila and Mahabharu Vidya Lila. Mahabharu is childhood pastimes and Mahabharu is scholarly pastimes. So it's an Adi Khanda, Chaitanya Bhagavad. The Shankirtan pastimes, Navadi Shankirtan Lila, is the Mahabharu Khanda. When Mahaprabhu comes back from Gaya, having been initiated, <clears throat> he, he cannot carry on as a pundit anymore. He cannot give you class. Only he's interested in performing Shankirtan. And one day he goes over the bodies to the house of Srivash Thakur. Brothers, <clears throat> we are wasting so much time sleeping at night. <clears throat> we will do Shankirtan, perform Shankirtan at night. <laughs> and then the devotee said, he didn't say, oh, well, I don't have anything to do tomorrow. I'll skip that for a minute. And he said, Jai, where are you going? Where are you going? And I was performing the lockdown a few times in the house of Shri Manikapo, sometimes in the house of John Rajiva Acharya. Now, at the end of the Madhulila, Mahaprabhu takes sannyas. The end of Madhulila. So why should then the Mahaprabhu take sannyas? We can discuss a little bit, we'll give a few verses, and we'll hear about the current of our This is Mandalina chapter 26, verse number 82 of the future. Purve, Jena Gopi Shah, Krishna Virabe, Mayen, Maran Pai, Chandra Udvaye. Chandra Udvaye, when the moon would rise, at that time, when the moon arrives in the evening, the, 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 the gopis, gopi shop, the, 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 the gopis of Vrindavan, buy in Madhavan Bhai. They, 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 they feared to die. They feared death when the moon rose because they would remember Vrindavan Chandra when the moon would rose. So thinking in this way, thinking of this mood of the gopis, they would fear dying when the moon rises. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Ekin, Gopi Bhave, Jogati Shar, Vrindavan, Gopi Gopi, Bolivya Nantar. One day, Gopi Bhave, in this mood, in the mood of the Gopis, in the moonrise mood, Jogati Shar, the Lord of the Jagat, the Lord of the Universe, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Vrindavan, Gopi Gopi, Bolivya Nantar. Nirantor, it said incessantly, he was chanting Vrindavan Gopi Gopi. So at that time, one of Mahaprabhu's students happened, happened to come. And he had heard that, that, uh, that Vishwampar was a great devotee and very pious. 
So the student came to associate with, with Vishnambra, and then he saw him sitting there chanting, Bhukhi 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 Bhukhi. So the student, he began to advise Vishnambra that Mataji, we do not hear in any scripture uh, the, the, the glories of chanting Bhukhi Bhukhi Bhukhi. The scriptures declare that one should chant the name of Krishna. And then one will, uh, one will attain immense piety by chanting, you should chant the name of Krishna. So this, this ignorant student, not understanding the gopis, the Krishna Virahe, the room is about to arise and the, and the gopis are so afraid that we'll give up our lives. And now this Mahabharata was in that room, in the complete gopi bar, and the student is saying, Krishna, Krishna, you should chant. And he said, Krishna? Mahabharata says, Krishna? You, you mentioned his name, that Vibhaji? And then there, he, 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 he said, I don't know what he's saying. He said, no, no, the Lord, he's that Vibhaji. You know what he did? You know how he treats treat women? Once he cut off the nose of the head and then cut off the ears, uh, and uh, he mentions great. He took everything away from Bali Maharaj, sent it to Mandala. Uh, he is a Vibhaji. You mentioned the name of the guy. And then Mahabharata will get more and more Gopi Baba emotional. He picks up a stick. And he's chasing that student. And the student's running for his life. Now, Chachinanda, he's very tall. If you, you see him in the TV, he's like, my poor children that I have here. You can imagine how swiftly he can run. That student was exhausted, exhausted, just trying to, just trying to get out of fear of his life. The devotees, they have to hold on to Mahaprabhu. They have to restrain him. And still he was trying to win a stick. And then that student, he came into the assembly of the other students in other Dikram. And he's hugging and hugging them. Hey, brother, what's happened to you? Why are you so exhausted? Oh, you cannot believe it. You can, I, I, I heard that you my Pandit was a very pious Krishna doctor. I went to associate with him. I saw him chanting, go be, go be, go be. I advised him.
So one day, one day, Mahaprabhu he said to Nityananda Guru, Because the markets were also temporary. 
people would bring their goods when they were when they set when the vegetables were they would bring and that's a hut, that's a a hut. That's an occasional market. It's an occasional market. So the makes it that the guts of the younger will go in this social interaction and discourse, Mahabharu would teach on the, on the banks of the Mahabharu and the guts. And Mahabharu and Yadir, and he did your education, education, Kashmiri, Loki Devi, she left her body on the, on the banks of the guts, uh, and everything happening on the guts. So many, there were many sannyasis in the society, and they were respected. So Mahabharu was explaining that the same way the body, the body they showed up, they will touch my feet, and in this way they will be delivered in. And so the devotees they weren't very happy about this. About this. I mean, with the number of people, he didn't speak then, but he was just waiting for the opportunity. After Shantipur, we were discussing in Shantipur a couple of days ago, when Mahabharu took permission from Sachimata, the order of Sachimata, to reside in the Permission to the devotees. He journeyed to Nilai Chao, Jagannathpuri. Actually, recently we, we were in Jagannathpuri with a couple of devotees from Jubu, and we were discussing the first three chapters of Anta Kanda, Chaitanya Bhagavad Gita's journey to Jagannathpuri. It's very fascinating. The different uh, events described in the Bhagavad Gita. And uh, <clears throat> at that time, the Nilai Prabhu was not saying much, but the first time. The first opportunity that the Nanda Prabhu got to touch the Danda of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he hadn't even touched it. It seemed to Mahaprabhu was hanging on to that the whole time. In the Ganga, as he was floating from Takwa and Radhadesh to Shantipur, and then 10 days in, in Shantipur, Mahaprabhu carried the Danda, and then journeying to, to, to Goda, to Puri. And then he left the Danda in the hands of Jagadan and Pandit, Mahaprabhu went for collecting arms. Imagine that you could be on and Mahaprabhu comes to the door one day and says, that's it. Take the picture of their head. Actually, when he took, when he took uh, the uh, Jagyu Bhavitra Anushtan, when he was awarded the second threat of the third admission, Sachinunda, Sachibula, he was going from door to door in another day, begging arms. Maharashtra and uh, Mahdurga, they assumed the form of Ramanis in another day to be able to give arms to Shachikura as he came from door to door at that time of Jagu So <clears throat> Nityananda Prabhu, the first chance he got to, to touch that Danda, he broke it into three different places and threw it in the Danda on the Nodi, which you can visit. We have a ashram there. The Nodi is So the Mahaprabhu was discussing, he discussed not only with the few devotees, Nityananda Prabhu, Mukunda Dada, Dharadha Pandit. Dharadha Pandit is saying, you think that by shaving your head you can attain Krishna? You think that by sh shaving your head you can attain Krishna? And then the devotees are saying, how will we have? Shika Antradhan, you, you cut off your shika, you cut off your head, then your hair, then how will we anoint your hair with the unlucky oil? How will we anoint your hair with the fragrant flowers? Could you imagine seeing such an under in the Kirtan, the beautiful, long, curly locks of black hair, fascinating down his shoulders as he's dancing with the Thai Kusha? What a sight. As we worship, we worship Chachinanda and the Thai Kusha is there. And the opulence of Mark Maharaj is explaining that the Nanda Prabhu rings on all of his fingers. So we're not worshipping in the Sanyas dress. Certainly that will happen. So in this way, Mahaprabhu 
e Gianni Gadaha 